Hello YouTube, it's me John Avenger once again, and we have another Blu-ray and DVD update for you guys uh, for the month of September, September 1st, 2021. So we're in the fourth quarter of 2021, the last four months, had a lot of stuff to show you guys. Hopefully my next update will be either a month or two, it depends if I'm going to buy stuff in October. But uh, the first one I got was a, is a Blu-ray of a, a sequel that I've been wanting to get for a while. Uh, I love the first one. I like the first one. It's just a little bit too long. This is a Tom Cruise movie. I know that Mission Impossible 7 is still on hiatus because of, you know, problems, lawsuits and everything because of the COVID. But this movie still got released. So this is Jack Reacher 2, Never Go Back with Tom Cruise and the always gorgeous Kobe Smulders. I wish they showed her face because I know who it is. And I enjoy the sequel. Compared to other movies that Tom Cruise has done, I'd rather see this than The Mummy any day that he did. The Blu-ray and the DVD. It also came with this really cool booklet I want to show you guys. Look, it came with this. Uh, Lee Child's Everyone Talks. It's, got, it's a little booklet. It has uh, some illustrations. Of Tom right there. This is the one where the, he thinks he has a daughter, you know, that blonde girl. The, it, there, there's some things that are not as good as the first movie, but it's a lot shorter and the villain's better and you have a way better female lead in this one compared to the first one. Because uh, Kobe smolders any day over Rosemont Pike. She was in the MCU, so Pike will never be in the MCU. You got to, yeah, I'll just show you the pictures. I don't want to, this print is very, very small. So you won't be able to see it on camera. But the illustrations are cool. That. And that's it. Okay, yeah. This book looks really cool. I'm glad I got it with this Blu-ray. It's a good movie. I think it's an underrated sequel. And it's not as bad as some people have said it is. It, you know, the some sequels are not going to be better than the first one. I think this one is a bit shorter because, you know, there's things I like better than the first one. Oh, it doesn't fit in. Wait, I'm going to fit it in there. Here we go. Just like that. It's a good movie. I'm glad I finally got it on Blu-ray. Next, this is the only other Blu-ray I got. Uh, it's part of a three-pack uh, because I got the first one on Blu-ray and the, and I, I just got the third one on DVD. Jack Hunter, The Stairway to Heaven. Star, Star of Heaven. This is the third and final one in the trilogy. Now I have all three films. I got the first one. I just got the second one on DVD. Jack Hunter and the... Uh, Quest for the Akhenaten's Tomb, and now I got the third one. So all three Jack Hunter movies. These are fun films. While they're not Indiana Jones, they still are way better than the Mummy 2017. Uh, they're better than the National Treasure movies, which I thought were just kind of dull. Uh, I like them better than some of the you know the Librarian movies you know that came out in the 2000s. I like that only because of the lead and. The third one is my favorite because of the lead girl. But these are fun films. If you've never seen them, they have them on 2B. You can watch them for free. And they're not Indiana Jones, but they're not terrible. They have way more entertainment value than I can count. And now I have all three, so I'm very happy. If I ever get this one on Blu-ray, I'll donate this DVD. But I have them all now. I'm very happy. Next, this is a, 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 this is a uh, double dip because the first one I had was a used copy, so it was old, so I just donated it. And uh, it's bare bones, but it's still a very entertaining movie with Wesley Snipes. This is what he did after Blade, The Art of War. I re-bought this movie at the dollar store. It's a brand new copy, not a slip cover this time, you know, slip case. Those, uh, those uh, you know, uh, cardboard box cases, yeah. It's a good movie. It's a little long, 116 minutes, but it's still a very good film. It's the best one of the three, that's for sure. I'll save that one for last. Next, I got two Bond movies. Yeah, don't bite my head off. These are the kind of Brit the British characters I can actually handle. This is the older ones. This is not the, the Daniel Craig movies. First, I got uh, one Roger Moore, May He Rest in Peace. This is one of the, one of the uh, films he did in the mid-70s. Uh, it also has Christopher Lee, who passed away, rest in peace. This is The Man with the Golden Gun. 
decent film, not the best film in the franchise, but it's not as bad as what's going to happen with No Time to Die, which doesn't even want to get released. It's way too long. The movie's going to be like three hours, and it, I bet you every critic is going to say the movie needs to be shorter. This film is only two hours and five minutes long, but way shorter than two hours and 45 minutes or three hours. Uh, the lead girl in the movie is, um, who is it? Britt Eklund. And look at this sexy picture of Bond uh, kissing a girl's stomach. Again, Bond is heterosexual like me, so I can I can go with that. And uh, yeah, this movie has a cool booklet too. Look at that. The old Bond movies are just some of the best because the Craig movies, the problem with those, they are very modernized and the action's good, but Craig is just really flat as Bond. I don't know. He's emotionless and he doesn't show any sense of humor or anything. At least Roger Moore, yeah, he's more campy, but he still, he still was a very charming Bond. Yeah, who else was in the movie? Yeah, uh, Maud Adams. I don't know, I don't know if she's still alive or not, but yeah, they were foreign, but they're beautiful women. Like, so a lot of these women in the in the early Bond movies are absolutely gorgeous. Like, you could tell that they, when they cast these women, they they were like looking for the most exotic, beautiful women all over the world, and I'm fine with that. My favorite Bond girl is from. The 80s, um, you know, um, Carrie Lowell as uh, Bouvier in uh, the, the Timothy Dalton's uh, License to Kill. That is my favorite Bond actress because she's badass, she's American, she has a short haircut, and she's just oozing sexiness all over. Now, this is the first Bond movie with um, Pierce Brosnan, my 90s Bond. Him I bought more than Daniel Craig because, you know, even though his later films were kind of weak, he still is, shows emotion. Goldeneye, yes, based on one of the best video games, too, uh, of the 90s on the N64. This one, I really enjoyed this one. And I, I played, I, I watched it once, but it is a classic from the 90s. This was the first Bond movie after Dalton's era. And, uh, you know, people call it one of the best Bond films of the 90s. And uh, it has the gorgeous uh, uh, Isabella Scrapo. We should see more of her. Love to see her in the MCU. Now, that is a real woman. There's a reason she was a Bond girl and not Emily Blunt. Uh, and you also got Famke Jansen, who, while I had some issues with her since X-Men 3, I forgave her, guys. It's been year It's been 15 years. I'm over it. I mean, we got way worse X-Men movies now than we did back in 2006. That was a misstep, not the worst of the franchise. And she's beautiful. She's the, the villainess of the movie. And uh, the film is two hours and ten minutes. While some of these Bond movies are too long, the recent ones are way too long. They're like two and a half hours, and, and I feel every second. This one was back in the day where, you know, a, a 90s action movies had way more action. and the, the pacing was much better. You don't need 30 extra minutes of padding to give us a good epic film. I think No Time to Die could have been two hours even. You don't need the extra 45 minutes. Adding four more characters is not needed, guys. I know it hasn't come out yet, but within the trailer, Money Penny you could cut out. Uh, the British chick from Captain Marvel you can cut out. Just keep Anna de Armas and keep Leah Sadal. That's all you need. And Bond, of course, and a villain. That's all you need. You don't need 150 characters. This franchise never needed to pad out the running time with too many characters. That's the problem with any of the Bond films, except for Dr. No, because that's the only one that's under two hours, mostly. But in the later films, like in the Dalton era, and in the uh, in the Brosnan era, and even Lazenby's first outing, it's just way too long. These movies could easily be trimmed a little bit. But uh, yeah, Bond is always never the problem with these films. He's always a good, you know, character to follow. Let me show this one next. This is a, a film directed by um, Sofia Coppola. Yeah, she's a really good director. I really loved uh, Lost in Translation with uh, Scarlett Johansson and Bill Murray. This is one of her early films, The Virgin Suicides. Yes, not the best title, but I've heard great things about this. It's got a great cast. Kirsten Dunst, who's going to be back in Spider-Man. I can't wait to see her. You got James Woods. You got Kathleen Kathleen Turner. Uh, you have uh, Josh Hartnett, Scott Glenn, Michael Pere, and Danny DeVito. Awesome freaking cast. See? You don't have to put Brits in a movie to make it freaking arts, artful and, and, and you know, uh, artistic. 
This film is actually shorter. It's only 96 minutes. If there's one thing that Sofia Coppola does is not drag a movie out to three hours. Her father, Boris Francis Ford Coppola, his movies are really good, but good God, his movies are too long. Like the Godfather trilogy, you could have cut a third of the running time because the first one's like, what, three hours? And I'm like, we get it for, for Coppola. It's a it's a, a mafia movie. And I know this is a lot of complaints, but I just want to get it out of my system, guys. It's a new, this new month, and the season of fall is coming. And we'll be saying goodbye to the summer weather. So I want to get this out of my system before I see some of these films. Next, I got these uh, family films, mostly, and old movies from back in the day. I'll start with this one. You got the Silver Screen series with these beautiful old uh, older actresses. You have uh, Elizabeth Taylor and Jane Powell and uh, uh, Carol Lombard and Paulette Goddard. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And some classic actors like Jimmy Stewart and Spencer Tracy and etc. Some good, good actors. And these are um, the movies in the back. You have uh, Beauty... Well, that's the uh, film I'm going to get to. You have uh, Pot of Gold, which I have already. I'll probably get rid of the old one. Father's Little Dividends, I have that one. Mr. Imperium, I finally got a good copy of it from Echo Bridge. Not a bootleg copy. I got rid of that. Made for Each Other. I've seen that. Royal Wedding. Affair in Monte Carlo. Suddenly with uh, Frank Sinatra. Cyrano de Bergerac. That's the longest movie here. It's like almost two hours. And uh, Her First Romance. So a lot of old school films from Echo Bridge, all mostly on one disc. Hollywood greats, yeah. You have to acknowledge the past if you want to enjoy stuff from the present. It was these actors, most of the uh, old school actors, that set the stage for what we got now. They, and they had to work without computers. Here's the beauty disc. That's the always gorgeous Janine Turner. If you've seen... Uh, cliffhanger. She's the girl in that. She's absolutely gorgeous, guys. I mean, look at her face. Look at it. Just really look at it. Yeah, Kate Beckinsale eats your freaking heart out. This is an absolute gorgeous woman. Like, I don't know what it is, but anytime I see a brunette that has a face like that, I'm like, I just, I just go bananas. I feel like the Roadrunner. I'm like running around in circles. <laughs> That's how you know this is a a more modern take on Beauty and the Beast. So I would rather watch this than the 2017 remake. It's shorter. It's only uh, 91 minutes. That's about the same running time as the animated version from 91 that Disney did. And it came out in the same decade. Disney always loves to freaking pat out their running time. Why? Because they think people will sit through two hours all the time. No, not me anymore. I only want to sit through two-hour movies like Shang-Chi, which I'm seeing in a few days. Because it's going to have a lot of action and beautiful visuals and a great cast and good performances. I don't want to sit through 30 minutes of padding or gay agendas or too much CGI. I already been through there. But this Beauty and the Beast, no CG, and it's a real man and a real woman. The way it should be. Yeah, there I said it. Next I got these. These are for Halloween. I really wanted to get these. Most of these I got at the dollar store because, hey, they have an abundance of media and I go for it. The last one is not. The last one I got at Walmart. This is the Creature Collection. Nine films. You got uh, the Snow Creature, which I've seen. That cover is not in the movie because it's not a, it's not a giant gorilla. You have uh, the She Beast. You have uh, Curse of the Wolf, Blood Predator, Chupacabra vs. the Alamo. A lot of these films you've never heard of. House of Mystery from the 1930s. Juggernaut. No, it's not the, uh, the X Men character. Mess of Lost Women and Horror of Spider Island. So, yeah, a lot of old school horror films and some like recent ones that are like that I've never heard of. There's Boris Karloff, may he rest in peace. And I got these because you know why not? You know October's coming soon, and I could watch some of these. And then you got the other set. This one has the uh, the She Beast, the Snow Creature, Blood Predator, Chupacabra vs. the Alamo. And Curse of the Wolf. And even if some of these are terrible, hey, in ha uh, the Halloween, yeah, it's it's a time of, of horror and terrifying, you know, films. So why not? It's not going to kill me. Last but not least, I finally got this. I enjoyed this. I saw this last year on Cartoon Network. 
while it's not good as good as Lego ba uh, Batman or Lego The Flash, it's still a good movie. And uh, I got it for $7 at Walmart. My dad got it for me. Lego Shazam. Yep, I finally got Lego Shazam, Magic and Monsters, with Shazam 2's coming out soon, Black Adam's coming out next year. This comes with a little figurine I want to show you guys. I love Shazam. I think he's a really cool kind of Superman character. Here's the artwork and the disc. It's just a plain DVD, but there's uh, some bonus cartoons on it. That's good. And here's a little figure. This, this I'm going to put later. This is just the, the picture of Shazam. And this is the awesome little figurine of Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam. No Billy Batson in here, just uh, the little toy. But it's it's worth it. was worth it. Because I went to Walmart, I looked around, and said, what can I buy? And I'm like, ah, a Shazam, Lego Shazam. I'm going to just keep this outside. I'm going to keep it in the box. So I'll just keep it. I'll just play it. And that's my DVD update, guys. A lot of stuff, right? Not a lot of common titles, you know, but some of these I've never seen before, and I'm willing to see them during this fall coming up because fall is over. It's not as long as the winter, but it's still there's still some time to kill. Four months left, and then we get to 2022. That's uh, Lego Shazam. So that's my stack. A lot of media, a lot of films, some I've seen already. No TV shows, but we'll, we'll get to that eventually. When I get a job, I'll be able to get more stuff and get more TV shows that I haven't gotten in a while. So Shazam is, Lego Shazam says, I'm out, and thanks for watching. My next review is going to be of uh, movies, you know, with animals in them. And uh, I'm going to do more live streams. My next one is tomorrow, hopefully, if all goes well. And uh, next week, I'm doing another live stream for Labor Day. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you guys in the next one.